time. It's me dressed as the Great Pumpkin again, and I'm out at the cabin, as you can see. I'm just about to set the camera up out at the feeder, have my lunch here, and uh, see what I can record for birds. I saw the male cardinal just as I came in, but of course I scared him off into the bushes, so whether we'll see him or not remains to be seen. Uh, I had to come out today because it, uh, well, it snowed yesterday, but nothing much. We got two or three centimeters, but the temperature dropped last night to minus four. And in the cabin here, it went down to zero. So I'm starting to be concerned about the onions and garlic and the chili peppers that I've had stored in here. So I've come out and got those ready to take them in the house and give you a look at them. I didn't quite realize that I still had so many onions. I've been using out of them since whenever it was in August that I harvested them. The variety was uh, called a Spanish onion. That's all they called it. I think Spanish onions in shops are much larger than these. That's about as large as mine got, and then there are lots of them that are smaller as well, but they're, they're very good. When I was removing them from the loft, I only found one that had started to spoil, so that's good. I have some shelves in the basement, a shelving unit that I keep mostly preserves on, but it isn't being used very efficiently. I'm going to um, load up several of the shelves, and hopefully that will free up a couple of them that I can set the onions out individually on shelves and let the air circulate around them. Hopefully they'll last until I get them used. This bag has my garlic and the chilies that were drying out here, and they're drying pretty nicely, but I didn't want those to freeze either, so all of that's going in the house as well. Anyway, I'll get this thing set up out at the bird table. Well, I think I have a cardinal that's camera shy. <laughs> I've enjoyed my afternoon out here at the cabin with all the birds, but the cardinal came back on a several occasions. He just would not come up to eat at the bird table. He was down below feeding on the ground with the, the juncos. I don't know, maybe he's shy of the blue jays, because as you've seen from the previous clips, once again, there's lots of blue jays. So I guess the next time I come out, I'll set the camera up to look down at the ground below the feeder and see if I can't get a little more video footage of my cardinal here. Well that's the onions all brought in and stored. Uh, I don't know, probably doesn't look like so much there now I guess, but that market basket full when I was carrying it back to the house, I would still say there's over 20 pounds of onions there. So Hopefully I'll get them used up before they start to spoil. And I think this method of putting them on these shelves, you can't see, but this, the shelf itself has a lattice work of holes in it, so should keep the air circulating around them, and hopefully they won't spoil. So that's just a little look at some of this year's preserves, ready for use this winter. All the leaves are down, so I guess it's time to prepare the fig trees for winter. Last year I had one of these electric uh, heat tapes that people put around water pipes and whatever in some area when they think they might freeze. 30 foot one and I made it do for both trees and both trees came through the winter. Well, this year I bought an additional 30 foot one and I'm, so I'm putting one 30 foot heat tape on each of the uh, fig trees. They're bigger than they were last year, and I just didn't think that uh, one would be enough. So what I have done so far there is I have put a couple of bamboo stakes in the ground, and then I've taken the heat tape and wrapped it around, and with zip ties, uh, I have uh, fastened it to the two bamboo stakes there. And when I got as high as the thing would go, the excess I just brought down through the middle to produce 
extra heat in there. There isn't any danger if it touches the tree that it will hurt it. Um, the 30 feet of it only uses 100 watts of electricity, so it really doesn't get all that warm. It just keeps things nicely above freezing, at least it did last winter. So now I'm going to cover it over with the new gizmo that I bought, and I'll show you what it looks like once I get it covered over. Now how's that for a strange looking contraption? It's like a little tent, a teepee tent, whatever. It has a zipper that goes up the whole side of it. It makes it easier to put around a shrub or a tree or whatever. It's meant to be used outside, of course, in the garden to protect a, an evergreen or something like that from uh, ice storms and snow. But it's the first covering in here over the, over the uh, fig trees. I think it's going to do a pretty good job but it doesn't have that much insulating factor so what I'm also going to do is put on top of that the uh, thin bed comforters blanket type things that I used last year so that it will have both. Now to keep my fingers crossed I guess until next spring for the unveiling and hopefully they'll survive another winter. With the extra heat inside of each one, I think they will, I don't know. Anyway, that blanket over the top, heat rises, so that should keep the, the heat that's rising, it should keep it inside of there longer to keep the temperature up. And these uh, heat tapes both have little um, like pilot lights on them. They're thermostatically controlled, so they only come on when the temperature is down around zero, 32 Fahrenheit. Um, in the warmer days in here in the hoop post they will shut off so got to get busy now I guess and get the other tree covered anything that I do out here either ends up being a plumber's nightmare or an electrician's nightmare <laughs> this one's an electrician's nightmare I either have to use two or three hundred feet of garden hose or two or three hundred feet of extension cord from the house and the, the extension cord was already out here because I run a fan here in the hoop post in the in the summertime on a timer. Anyway, they are both covered up and both electric tapes, their little pilot lights have come on so it is working. Hopefully we'll see it survive the the winter. The very last harvest for this year. I think there's a dozen cabbages there ranging in size from small to even smaller. <laughs> but I think I'll be able to make a decent batch of uh, sauerkraut from them. Very pleased with the parsnips. There were one or two that had sort of like those multi roots on, but nothing like the uh, endive was anyway. And they range in size from nice big things like that. There's four or five like that over here to the, the smaller guys. But you know, they keep me in parsnips for quite a while. I really don't eat a lot of them. I have miserable luck every year with turnips or swedes or whatever you want to call them. That's pathetic and that's as big as I got out of the little two little rows of them that I tried to grow this year. I think I'm going to give up. I don't know what it is you do to make them grow, but I kept them watered all summer and everything and that's what I get out of it. And I pulled one of the salsify just to see what it looks like, Rob. And if you're watching the video, that's what your salsify root looks like. I'll probably cook it to see what it tastes like, but I grew them more for the uh, flowers anyway. I want to see them because you said they have a blue flower. The native one here has a yellow, almost dandelion-looking flower. So I will be interested in the spring to see what they look like when they bloom again. But that is the final harvest for the year. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah, that's me again. Something I forgot to say that I wanted to say. Obviously all those leaves down below are leaves off the cabbage plant. The hens are going to get them. But in the hoop house, when I showed you that long shot of the two fig trees under their covers, you probably saw all of my um, smart pots laid out. I don't really know if it does anything for them or not, but I do that every year. I lay them out on top of the beds in there over the winter, sort of solarizes them, I think. I'm thinking if there's any sort of, a, you know, virus or whatever, fungus growing on them, that being exposed to all that sunlight before I use them again might possibly be beneficial. Anyway, that's, that's where I store them. So I once again will say thank you for watching.